So there's this myth out there on YouTube, the YouTube abyss, that the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera is a horrendous vlogging camera. Now I'm not gonna lie people, I do kind of agree with you, but how can you throw out statements and accusations like that without even giving it a go, mate? But at the end of the day, let's be honest people, if we consult the vlogging camera checklist of peace, as we can see, the Blackmagic pretty much doesn't tick any of the specified vlogging camera checklist of peace. It clearly ain't very small. We need something small, portable, and easy to carry when we're out and about doing our vlogs and that. There's no flip screen, so you're not gonna be able to see your beautiful face whilst you're filming. The autofocus, Almost non-existent, mate. Now, when it comes to the battery life, we know that the battery life in this thing is absolutely shit. And the file sizes, mate, they're absolutely through the roof. So in terms of the vlogging camera checklist, it's not looking good, mate, is it, for the Blackmagic? But like any bit of cheeky controversy, someone's got to step up to the plate and, you know, give it a go and see if it's actually possible. So today, mate, I am going to be vlogging with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And at the end of this video, I should be able to give you a conclusion as to whether this camera is the worst vlogging camera on planet Earth or whether it's actually not too bad. Now, first of all, what is the actual reason why someone would pick a Blackmagic over another camera on the market? Now, in my opinion, it is the quality for the price. The image quality that comes out of the Blackmagic is so much better than most of the small DSLR mirrorless cameras on the market at the moment. However, it does lack that kind of small DSLR ergonomic feel that we are so used to in most small DSLR mirrorless cameras. So before I treacher into the unknown of vlogging with this thing, I need to try and make this camera fit these checks as close as I possibly can before I take this thing out and start actually bloody vlogging. So first things first, let's make this thing as small as we possibly can. Let's chuck this NATO rail on the top so that we can attach our mic. The Canon 10 to 18 is gonna do very, very nicely here, especially for that wide angle lens for vlogging. Now we're not gonna be whacking any SSDs off of this. We're gonna go straight in old school, mate, with an SD card. Now in terms of battery life, we're pretty much buggered, mate. We do wanna keep this thing small and portable. So we're gonna have to unfortunately use about six bloody batteries. Now in my opinion, if you're walking around with the anal beads, mate, you're a numpty. I honestly remember the time when I used to walk around with one of these things and what an idiot I was, mate. Is there anything that screams vlogger louder than holding one of these, mate? Now I get it, mate, you can wrap it around a tree and whatnot, but I ain't bloody Rambo, mate. I'm not gonna be climbing up a tree just to do a bloody vlog. In my opinion, a mini little tripod with a ball head on the top does the job. So in terms of file sizes, mate, we do not need to be shooting 6K raw for a bloody vlog. It's well over the top, mate. Let's try and keep these file sizes down. Let's go with ProRes 422 10-bit color HQ, mate, bosh. Now we'll do that in 4K Ultra HD. That is gonna give us a 16 by nine frame, which is gonna be perfect for our vlogs. So if we have got a 250 gigabyte SD card, we can record for about 45 minutes on one of them cards. Now on a fast enough SD card, you can actually shoot raw. So if you did wanna shoot 6K raw at a 12 to one ratio, you can do that on this SD card. Now, because I'm a bit of a peasant, mate, I don't actually own a 250 gigabyte SD card. So for this vlog, I'm gonna shoot with a 128 gigabyte card, and then I'm gonna use two extra 64 gigabyte cards to give me the emulation of actually owning a 250 gigabyte SD card. So that leaves us with the main two issues, mate. The flip screen and the autofocus. So without further ado, mate, I feel like we should bloody kick off this vlog, mate. It's getting a bit late, isn't it? So yeah, mate, look. Let's hit that red button together, you ready? Boom, the vlog has officially started. Red light on there, so we know. We know it's recording. <sighs> What's going Oh no, I'm out of focus. No bloody autofocus. What's going on, you lot? I hope you're all sweet. So, mate, yeah, um, I'm in Essex, obviously. That's where I live. And this is going to be the first vlog with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Now, I'm not going to lie, holding it feels pretty damn nice. And you know what, mate? This whole, like, quarantine thing has really made me, like, appreciate it. My local area. Now, Essex, where I live, I live in, like, a little village hamlet kind of thing. Um, and you know what, mate? There are tons of absolutely beautiful churches. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not religious or nothing, but I love a good church, mate. Now, this church is actually so close to my office. My office, you could literally shout and you could hear me. I'm such like a nature geezer, mate. I don't really like the cities. I much, much prefer being out in the countryside and that. So obviously, one of the bad things about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera is 
No autofocus, mate. Now, throughout my entire vlogging career, could you call it that? I've been using the Sony a7S Mark II, the world's worst autofocus system. So, something that I've learned over the years to basically get focus for when I'm shooting a vlog, arm's length is, believe it or not, let me throw you well out of focus. Basically, what I do is, I get the camera, put it on my knee, so it's level with my knee, and then, I get the focus on the bottom or the tip of my toe. So that distance from my knee to my toe is about the right distance between my shoulder and the camera. That is how I stay in focus when it comes to shooting vlogs. I know, mate, proper technical stuff, but all of you autofocus folk, yeah, mate, it really actually ain't that odd. Every time I want to do a shot, all I do, stick the camera on my knee, focus on my foot. I've got the right distance, mate. So, as I've got the WeBuilt S with me, it would be an absolute shame to not throw the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K on the WeBuilt S, get some absolutely naughty shots of this church, because in the ProRes 422 HQ 4K, you can actually shoot 50 frames a second on one of these SD cards, mate. You don't need an external SSD. Fucking hell, look at the size of that plane, mate. We're pretty close to Stansted Airport here, people. Even though there's like nothing going on, there is a... Uh, there's an airport just down the road, which is good for me. I'm all about that. Anyway, mate, let's get this uh, black magic on the gimbal and see what we can get of this church. Core, mate, juicy stuff. But old your horses, people, we're overexposed. So obviously with the Blackmagic Raw, you can basically pull that exposure all the way down and re-expose your shot. But however, with the ProRes, mate, our exposure's baked into our codex. So let's see if we can bring back our highlights. Did they come back? I don't know. Let's do another test underexposing this codec and see how we get on with it. Can we bring back the detail in them? Hold on, that ain't even dark enough, is it? There we go. Can we bring back the details when we are underexposed with the ProRes? Let's see. Now, another good thing about the ProRes on this camera is there is a ton of dynamic range. There's three different kind of picture profiles, you could call them, but they're basically dynamic range settings. You've got Blackmagic Film, which is this. Now, this is the video dynamic range, which obviously there's not as much dynamic range, but it's a much nicer and cleaner look if you're going for a no grade, straight out of camera look. However, there is also extended video. Now, this is basically Blackmagic Film with a lot more contrast. However, I find that it actually protects the highlights quite a bit. So depending Depending on how much grading you want to do to your vlog, you can pick between them three kind of dynamic range settings. Now for me personally, I think I'd just stick to black magic film because all you have to do is chuck a little bit of contrast in there, your colour saturation comes back up and you get the maximum amount of dynamic range, which is one of the reasons why we actually want to use ProRes over a dodgy 8-bit camera. So yeah mate, um, yeah, bosh. Oh, and by the way people, I just had to change over my very first battery already. <laughs> I swear I've only been filming with this thing for like 10 minutes and uh, yeah mate. <laughs> Camera battery one, done. So, church number two mate. We are looking at the Saint Germain Bobbinworth. Hey, let's see the flare. Oh, look at that mate. Damn. So this is a pretty good example of the dynamic range on this camera. You can see we've obviously got the sun, which is obviously blown out because it's the sun. But we can still see all of this detail in the shadows here. So I'm loving this camera. And you know what, mate? We're already halfway through this 128 gigabyte card and I feel like I've only turned the camera on for a minute. God, that wind is picking up. Anyway, this is the last church that I'm going to see because we're going to go home now. We're going to go see my mum. And we're gonna go walk the dog, because obviously dogs need walking. Tilly, Psst. you wanna go for a walk? Come on then. Oh dear. What are you doing, Tilly? A cheeky little. Tilly, who's that? <laughs> Cows, don't you? Weirdo, if you ask me. Huh? The cow whisperer. Ooh. Do you reckon you can get coronavirus from a cow? No. I think this camera's a bit big. Yeah. For like vlogging. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite big. Well, that's the thing. Everyone's saying that this camera's too big to vlog with, but I actually don't think it's too bad at all. Try and hold it and film yourself in front. Say hello to the mm -hmm. U lot. 
Hello, the you lot. <laughs> 10 out of 10. The lens actually looks, I mean, not that that matters, but. What, looks a bit big? Yeah, yeah. the lens, where are we? So yeah, I'm down to, I've got eight minutes left on this card and this is a 128 gigabyte card. So I've got the backups in my pocket, the backup 64 gigabyte peasant cards. Yeah, we might have to jump over to them in a minute, but we're only on battery two, quite surprised, mate. Battery two is holding up like a beast. The dog walks off without us and because she's like pretty blind, because she's so old, she can't find us once she's lost us. Silly. Now, to be honest, something that I should have put on that vlogger camera checklist was IBIS. Now, obviously the Blackmagic has not got in-body image stabilization, but however, my nifty 10 to 18 Canon 4.5 lens has got optical stabilization. That's why I can hold the camera and it's not like super jittery. The fact that obviously I've got a really, really short amount of media on this camera, it makes me like not trigger happy. When I'm shooting on like an 8-bit camera where the files are tiny, you can just be trigger happy and shoot as much as you possibly want but with this but with this um it's actually making me pick the moments that i actually record so it's not too bad oh so lovely little walk um right before i go back to the office i have got to take some of the create bits we're sending a t-shirt to larry in helsinki larry you're a bloke or a girl, I'm not sure if it's... And we've got a hoodie and a t-shirt to Hungary. You Europeans, mate, loving the create bits. But before I do that, got to go and face the world in Sainsbury's. And can you believe it? I've still got three batteries. Not bad, Black Magic. You're doing better than I thought. So just dropped off the parcels at the post office and went and got some groceries for myself and my parents. Made it out alive, I think. Wash them hands and that, just be careful. But remember I was talking about churches? Well, just so happens that in my hometown, literally, I used to ride my bike yeah. up and down here every single day when I was a kid. And guess what I never even knew was right there. Now this church is called Greenstead Church, yeah? And it's the world's oldest wooden built church. Not gonna lie, that is pretty naughty, isn't it? I guess the main benefit of the whole Verona Kyra situation is the fact that I've actually taken in my local surroundings a lot more because I never even knew that this was like a, a big thing. Oh, someone's, uh, someone's got their quad bikes out. The oldest in the world. And you know what, I've just checked. I've got under a minute left on this card, so it's time to change the card. And you know what, when I do so, I think it's time for a bit of B-roll. Let's B-roll the hell out of this. Right, let's see if it Oh no, the microphone. Oh, we're gonna go Danny DeVito style, mate. Right, let's see if I can drive my Lamborghini with the camera on the shelf like that, mate. We're going bare back here without the mic. Well, the mic's still plugged in, but it's like hanging off. So, Know what, mate? We're getting some absolutely gorgeous golden hour light. How does my face look? Am I looking pink? So, people, that was nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. That was actually quite a pleasant experience to vlog on the Black Magic. You know what, I'd even go as far as saying it's just as hard to vlog on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K than it is to vlog on the A7S Mark II. It's got the exact same limitations, horrendous autofocus, no flip screen, terrible battery life. But, 
I only use two bloody batteries. What is that about, mate? I thought I was gonna steam through all six of the batteries that I had. Now, I'm assuming that's because I shot in ProRes and not in 6K RAW. If you're gonna shoot in 6K RAW, then I'm pretty sure that battery life is probably gonna be cutting off. Now, would I vlog on this thing again? Absolutely, mate. Now, just like on a cooking show where they like teach you to make a cake, but they've like kind of made one earlier to save time. I've made a couple of notes um, about things that I didn't quite like about vlogging with this camera, things that I did like vlogging with it, and a couple of things that I would do next time if I was to vlog with this thing again. So the first thing, mate, the battery life, nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Now, I think the main reason for that is every time I turn the camera on, I thought, right, what is the purpose of this shot? What am I gonna say in this shot? So I only turned the camera on when I actually had something that I needed to say. But in terms of the media storage, it is a completely different story, mate. Now, even with a 256 gigabyte SD card, you get about 45 minutes in that ProRes HQ codex. So I was constantly thinking in the back of my head, right, how much media have I got? How much media have I got? Should I be shooting for this long? So yeah, mate, I did kind of get a bit of like anxiety around like how much have I got left? And that was taken away from my vlog, from the story. And in my opinion, you just want a camera that allows you to tell the story as organically as it is and vlog as organically as you can without thinking battery life, uh, bloody media storage, like all of this kind of crap that doesn't matter. It's definitely not a bad option to stick a one terabyte SSD on the top here. That'll give you much, much longer times. Now the size and the weight of the thing, mate, I had absolutely no issues vlogging with this. When you actually look at the rig, yeah, that doesn't look like a big vlogging setup. Now the dynamic range in this thing is absolutely stunning. You get loads of detail in the highlights, loads of detail in the shadows. And to be honest, in my grade on this vlog, I just wanted to do it really, really fast, chuck on a grade and then add it to multiple clips. Cause that's kind of how you do a vlog. You don't spend hours and hours grading a vlog. You kind of want a really quick turnaround, fast grading, that kind of stuff. So I tried to stay organic to an editing and grading process on a vlog. So the grade was like, eh, it's okay, but you could definitely like fine tune that and go through each shot and grade it really, really nice but I try to keep it organic. Now in terms of the autofocus, you already know the deal with what I do. I stick it on my knee, focus on the end of my foot. That then gives me the right distance to vlog with. Now for a lot of people, that is gonna be a deal breaker. A lot of people do actually rely on autofocus. There's nothing wrong with relying on the autofocus. However, for me, I've just used manual focus for like the last eight or so years and it doesn't seem like a big deal for me just to manually focus on my foot, then shoot in manual focus. And then when I'm shooting someone else, I can just focus, you know, and then back to me. Now the flip screen is obviously a bit of a nightmare. I've never vlogged with a flip screen myself. However, I don't particularly like looking at myself when I'm vlogging. It takes away from like what you're actually trying to say. If you've got a screen on the side, you're thinking, right, am I in focus? Is my exposure right? And all of that crap. You're not thinking about what you're trying to say in the engagement with the camera. Now don't get me wrong, a flip screen is so beneficial. You can check you're in focus, you can check your exposure. If I had one myself, I'd make sure I was in focus, check my exposure, flip it back round, and then start vlogging. Cause I don't want that distraction when I'm trying to make a video. So what would I recommend and what would I do next time I shoot a vlog with the Black Magic? Now I'm gonna be honest people, do you remember when I said this at the start of the video? We do not need to be shooting 6K RAW for a bloody vlog. Well now I'm thinking, maybe next time I would actually use B-RAW. Now the reason is because in ProRes, if you do clip your highlights, mate, you ain't getting them back. And obviously because there's no flip screen, you can't actually tell if you're exposed. So if you do shoot in B-RAW, any overexposed, anytime your white balance is off, you can re-expose, re-color your shot undestructively. Now, if you're shooting the 12 to one compression ratio, you are gonna get about an hour on a 256 gigabyte SD card, mate. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description for an SD card that I do recommend if you're gonna be shooting like this. But then again, if I was gonna shoot any like 50, 60 frames a second stuff, I'd probably then just jump back over to ProRes and shoot that in ProRes because then you know that SD card is gonna be able to handle 60 frames a second in that codec. And if I was shooting in the B-Raw, I would definitely apply the extended video LUT into the file because that's gonna give you a straight out the box, pretty good grade. You've then only got to do a few little tweaks, but if you do clip, if you do overexpose, you can take that grade off in the edit because we've obviously shot RAW. We've still got all of that RAW information. We can go back and retain all of our highlights, shadows, whatever we do wrong with our clip. So then people, um, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera for vlogging. It's definitely not a bad vlogging camera, but I definitely wouldn't say it's a good vlogging camera. It's still got a long way to go in terms of vlogging. It wasn't made for vlogging, let's be honest. But is it a bad vlogging camera? 
I'm gonna have to say no, mate. I'm gonna have to say no. You might think it is, but for me personally, the way that I shoot, the way that I've shot vlogs in the past, this camera is definitely not a bad vlogging camera. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching, and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bush.